What's up, anime advice, YouTubers, you know, and internet alike and whatnot. Um, welcome to another episode of Dunce Cap. This episode is going to be a bit different, though. This is actually going to be an entirely off topic uh, episode where I'm actually going to cover a book that, that I uh, finished reading and everything. And while uh, currently it has nothing to do with really any of the whiskey media sites, uh, it may one day. Uh, hopefully it'll have to do with screened at some point. At least the author anyways. But uh, anyways, I'll, I'll get right on to it. Um, uh, this is one of my uh, favorite science fiction authors. I have uh, a number of his books and uh, apparently need to uh, uh, basically start start getting a, a few more of them and whatnot. Uh, but uh, I, I borrowed this book from a buddy and everything and so uh, I'm going to uh, I just finished it and everything so I'm going to tell you guys about it so without further ado um, here is The Lost Gate by Orson Scott Card uh, this book came out like the beginning of the year and everything and uh, it's a, one of the new book series that Orson Scott Card is working on uh, for those of you maybe only semi familiar with Orson Scott Card I have here the four book set of the uh, Ender series and the four book set of the Shadow series which is basically like a a sequel series to the Ender series kind of actually no it's not like a sequel series it's like a parallel series more so because it just follows a different character during basically the entire same time frame as, as the Ender series those are wonderful, wonderful books. Those I actually own. Um, Lost Gate, I do not. I want but uh, like I see, um, I wasn't quite sure because I've been having a lot of trouble picking books and whatnot. But uh, I really enjoyed this one. It's only like 380 pages, so it's not a real bad read at all. And the prints, you know, pretty good size. And everything. Um, it felt a little different as a card work because I had mostly just read, you know, the Ender and Shadow series, and so they were a lot more in depth uh, in like the details and what was it, like it was. Of course, there was a lot more complicated topics in those. So in this one, um, it was a lot easier to follow like the details of what was going on. Even though there were some confusing points with. Uh, like some of the technical parts of uh, uh, different types of majory and everything, but um, like the book itself, I I, I liked how uh, there there were a lot of things uh, going and whatnot. Like like there there was different. Um, I had a different feeling like when I read it, like. I, I thought it was kind of, it was just kind of strange that it's supposed to be a science fiction story and whatnot and there was I I was surprised at the different sexualized moments in it and like some of the, some of the innuendo that came up and everything. I mean it wasn't really like bad or anything like that but like I was I was just uh, kind of surprised to see it in a card book, I guess, because there really wasn't much for that kind of innuendo or anything like that in the Ender or Shadow series, and so to have it in here and talk about, you know, planting seed and uh, and whatnot, uh, it was, it kind of threw me off, but I mean, not, not in a bad way, I was just uh, surprised, but uh, considering uh, the story itself, uh, it, I, I mean, really, it fits in perfectly. He was, uh, you know, Carr was just uh, keeping with the, uh, uh, you know, what he believed is, you know, the, the wording that would go along with, you know, whichever part of the story he, w he was telling. Because there, because uh, there are multiple chapters in here that follow a separate character, um, than the main character, and 
then at the uh, for like the last couple of chapters, uh, those characters actually get tied in. So like those storylines actually get tied in. But uh, so I mean, I I, uh, I was a little surprised at the ending. Uh, of course, I went into this. I I wasn't even. I I thought it was just a standalone book. But knowing Card, I should have uh, known better that it was going to be a series. And I really didn't come to that realization until about halfway through, and it just felt like, you know, the pacing was way off for it to be a standalone book, let alone so short. So, uh, so I'm glad that there's going to be more, but the crappy thing is, is you know, this, this book's only been out seven months, so uh, it's going to be at some point next year, hopefully, whenever the next one comes out, but I can't wait for it. And everything, but, uh... Uh, the pacing is really good and everything. I like. I really enjoy the pacing of the story. It goes along really well. I mean, uh, the whole this whole book covers like three years though, so there's no sense of you know uh, like time flow at all. There's random skips. Like you'll just go from one paragraph to the next, and there'll be a like a couple mo a skip of a couple of months or something like that. So, uh, so, I mean, in that case, I kind of wish there would have been, like, an asterisk kind of, like, in the middle of the page that kind of, like, separates them. So, you know, that either there was a time skip or that, you know, there, you know, just events have changed or something like that. I kind of like it when, when things get a little more separated instead of immediately jumping from, or immediately going to the next line down for the next paragraph and it being, like, Four months later. Oh, well, that's a personal preference, and obviously I'm no editor, so uh, it works out. But I mean, I really enjoy the book and everything. But uh, I haven't even told you guys the story behind it, so I'll get right on that. Um, the story is about uh, Danny North, uh, and uh, he he is uh, basically the prince uh, of of sorts. Of the of the uh, of the North family, and the North family are gods that live like hillbillies in North Carolina, I believe, or Virginia. One of those. I, I don't remember. Um, and apparently, like all all of the gods that we know, the Greek gods, the the Indian gods, the Persian gods, all this different stuff. Um, all the gods are real but they're all like it's weird they all have different powers and everything I mean there are a lot of like similar powers you know that they call majory and they just have you know they're able to work with different things whether it's water wind um, fire uh, animals uh, stone uh, and then of course like working with gates being able to basically not time travel but like travel from place to place. Kind of like the movie Jumper. Where he's just able to poof and then just go and appear somewhere else. But the thing is, is Ga there's more to Gates than that. Gates um, can be moved. Like uh, a someone who know, who can, who can uses Gates and knows how to use Gates, uh, a Gate father, um, he can, or she, or whatever, um, can uh, can even move them like they can move gates and they can put people through gates. They can lock gates. They can unlock the gates. They can make it public. Um, yeah, and they can like put them over people and all stuff. So it's uh, they can do a lot with them and everything. But either way, it's transporting. And then also the cool thing about the gates is, no matter what's wrong with you, or at least as far as uh, right now goes, unless you're dead. Um, It'll completely heal you. So, like, if you got a huge cut and, you know, the, uh, you know, you go through a gate, then it'll be all healed up and you'll be good as new. So, that that's pretty cool and everything. But, Danny did not know that he, he was gate mage. And so, uh, you know, he was just living his life and his, his family and everything thought he was a Drekka, which means he just has no powers. You know, and Drekka is only like one step up from a drowther, 
and a drowther is just a human being. Uh, just regular human and everything. It, they thought it was kind of odd because his parents were really prestigious and they had to kind of work around some stuff in order to even get married and whatnot. But, uh, but the thing is, is um, uh, it's been four, almost 1,400 years since the last uh, uh, gate mage because now all the families uh, kill gate mages because the previous one, uh, Loki, um, he uh, closed all the gates in the world. And because what the gods would do is traverse between like their home world, uh, West Steel, and go through a great gate to go there. And what, whenever mages pass through a great gate, their power greatly increased. And so that's how they were gods, even though basically they're mortal. Though I mean, they're they're mortal gods. It's re it's a weird opposing concept, but that that's at least how I understand it. And so. Uh, <laughs> You know, a family is just supposed to kill gate mages if they come up because they feel that, you know, they're going to be like Loki and they're going to, uh, you know, eat eat people's outselves and close gates and you know just just you know wreak havoc because they're, in general, like char the characteristics of a, of a gate mage are, you know being a trickster and stuff like that and everything and and they're also like really smart and they're re really handy with languages like they pick up languages and accents no problem and they're they're you know they excel academically and whatnot whatever academics they actually get taught but I, anyway a um, uh, couple of families including the, the Greek family and the North family uh, find out that uh, Danny is gay mage. He didn't even know he was until it got pointed out to him. And so uh, he, he basically this whole book is about Danny being on the run and uh, getting, uh, you know, just going from place to place trying to, you know, just keep, keep himself out of trouble, keep himself alive. You know, and he gets a lot of experiences. He makes some friends and then he finally starts uh, being able to get some, like, training of sorts and, uh, and everything, and so like, um, even though like there has been a gate mage in almost fourteen hundred years, he slowly starts to get a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a little better knowledge of what he, he can do with his powers and whatnot. And then, of course, a couple of uh, uh, not geeky. Uh, I forget the names of the girls, like what they are, but uh, they're able to like lock and unlock his gates which where the, the the two girls can't create gates but they can like lock and unlock them and stuff I guess like a gate sister or something like that it's I forget exactly the terminology there's a lot there's like four names for every single kind of mage based on their level and of course there's obviously a male and a female one and then there's a lower one and a higher one so it's it's kind of it there's a lot of naming in here Anyway, I think so. That's kind of how that goes and everything. And of course, uh, then the other uh, chapters follow Wad, who I assume is actually Loki. Wad is Loki. He and you know he is the Gate Thief as well. Like they thought Loki and the Gate Thief were separate. No, they were the same. Or no, the Gate Thief is Gel or whatever, or Bell. Bell with one L. Um, is the gate thief because they're always hungry to eat other people's gates and something or other. It's, it's really weird how the power of Bell works because apparently Bell is some other sort of god or something like that. But no, Loki is Wad and he is in West Hill and he he spent the better part of the 14, 14th centuries living in a tree. Like he gated, gated himself in a tree when it was young and he would grow along with the tree. Like the shape of his body was outlined on the tree bark and he was growing up with it. So it was interesting. And like he just kind of popped out of there one day and decided to go. And, and over in Westville they have like, everybody's kind of getting weaker and whatnot, but they have, it's, it, Westville is just like a different kind of earth. 
but it seems more like it's like medieval sort of though because like every you know most everyone has like pretty much everyone has some sort of majory you know everything but none of, nobody's like really powerful anymore because obviously the great gates are closed and there are no more and but like there's like kings and queens and castles and stuff like that and everything but uh Wad's cer certainly an interesting character. He would gate around all the time. He he was he was basically an unofficial spy, even though everyone despised him and everything. And uh, I don't want to give away a bunch of the story because a lot of Wad's details give away different parts of the story. And excuse me, this is uh, ran actually kind of surprisingly long for it for uh, what I was talking about here. So uh, I'm gonna finish up you know or you know basically do this in closing um it's an enjoyable read you know it's not very long um good work orson scott card and everything like that um i look forward to the next one and uh uh i'd say like overall like with the story and just you know with how, how everything was told and the characters and whatnot um i really liked the like i really liked the book i mean it's not, I, I haven't, I really anticipate the sequel, but yet it's not the most anticipated I've been of a sequel, but for me personally, for what it is and everything, and uh, I would still give it uh, a 5 out of 5 for myself for a rating, because it's just really enjoyable and everything, and so uh, uh, I can't wait to read uh, this other Orson Scott card book that I have here uh, that I borrowed from a friend. And so, uh, even though I do not own this, I will at some point because I really like it and, and whatnot. So, uh, I guess, uh, you know, tell, tell me what y'all think and whatnot. I know it's off topic, so probably, you know, nobody on Anime Vice has read this. But, hey, I'd like to, you know, hear, hear your thoughts on what I've told about it or whatever, you know, if you read up about it and then see what I got to say. Then cool. But, hey. Uh, you know, this has been another episode of Dust Cap and whatnot. You know, off topic. So, hey, peace.